And now, let's go back. So, as I've said, since you already know about the rules of the debit and credit, and you already know that there are charts of accounts, so even if I did not put here any chart of accounts, let's invent, okay? So, I have no space for the chart of accounts because this one, the, you, we should have a chart of accounts for this one so that we can clearly, uh, what do you call this, record. But let's assume that there is a chart of accounts based on our imagination, okay? So what will happen is we will record this particular transaction first. The owner invested 100000 to open the business. And if you can imagine what we have uh, put here a while ago in the past episodes and in this particular video, you will know that the assets here have increased, right? The 100000 But instead of saying it increased, you say that this has been debited. Okay? And then we have here... The capital account, the capital account, if you can still remember, and liabilities equals liabilities plus capital, the capital has increased also. But instead of saying that the capital has been increased, you say it has been credited. The question is, how are you going to record this? So you're going to record this like this. So what is the debit? Of course, as if we have a chart of accounts, the debit is, of course, cash, 100,000. So that's how you record the debit. How about the credit? The credit is uh, Baby G Capital, for example. So these accounts, as if we are imagining that it is present in the chart of accounts. So we have Baby G Capital. 100,000. So as you can see, the credit has been indented so that the debits will be emphasized to be on the left side and then the credit is a little bit indented to the right. Okay? But it could be reversed in your point of view. But that's it. However, this is not yet complete because you are going to indent once again and you have To make a small explanation, like for example, owner's investment, so that anybody who will read this recording will be able to understand why did this happen. You have debited cash, you have credited BBG capital because the owner has invested. Okay? Of course, it is not yet complete because you should make here a date. Like, for example, this happened on November 1, 11-1, 20-X-2. So that's the complete journal entry. And then if ever there are still transactions on 11-1, you record it like this until at the end of the day, if that is the end transaction for the day, you have to put a number sign at the end so that on the next uh, entry, it will be on a different date already, like 11-2. But if it is not yet the final entry for the day, don't put the number sign. So that's how you make a journal entry. Okay? Now, let's go to letter B. So this is letter A. We have letter B. But we are not going to put already the date and this uh, simple explanation. We just focus on the debit and credit. On the letter B, we have business permits and licenses paid 2300 Since th that is paid, so that means the assets are decreased, particularly cash. So you are going to credit cash because cash has been decreased because of the payment. Okay? And then, for example, in the chart of accounts, there is uh, a list there on the expenses regulatory expenses. So, we are going to use that. Because uh, letter B made the expenses bigger because again, the payment of business permits are considered as expenses. So, we have 
2,300 and then cash 2,300 as credit because it has been decreased. So that's how you do it. Okay? How about letter C? On the letter C, as I've said, you're going to credit cash because you have paid in advance. Normally, it's nice if you are very much, uh, it's nice if you are going to focus on the assets. It's because it's more relatable, right? So, what I do is if ever there is in an expenditure, I will always write immediately credit cash. So, in this case, we have cash for 15000 credit because you have paid for it. However, if you can still remember, this is also, there is also an asset that was acquired here because you have paid for something in advance without using its benefit yet. Okay, so that is what do we call as uh, prepaid rent, for example. Again, you have to imagine that there is a chart of accounts and you saw prepaid rent on the chart of accounts. So that's what we are using. So that is the entry. And then you have letter D entry. So letter D entry, supplies were purchased for 20000 and 10000 was paid in advance and the rest were paid after two months. Okay? So what happened? Of course, the assets increased by way of supplies. So instead of saying increased, the supplies are debited. Right? By how much? 20,000. But the cash has been credited because of your payment of 10,000. You follow? And if you can still remember, in letter D, there is an increase in liability of 10,000. Let's assume that that is under accounts payable. And that accounts payable is an account listed in the chart of accounts. Accounts payable. 10,000. So, that is your entry in letter D. So, as you can see, this is what do we call as mixed entry. Because there are more than two entries. Not like this letter A, letter B, and letter C. Okay? So, that is a complex entry. And sometimes, it can go up to three debits, three credits, four, etc. It's still acceptable so long as the debit, which is 20,000, and the credit, which is also 20,000, as you can see, is balanced. Everything should be balanced. Okay? Now, let's have letter E. Letter E, office equipment was purchased for 30,000. So, that would simply mean, since you purchased it for cash, as I've said, since it's silent, you have to credit cash 30,000. However, since the office equipment are to be used for more than one year, that is considered uh, a non-current asset. So that means you have to debit office equipment 30,000. And then, letter F, we have utilities paid for two months is 19,750, right? So, again, since there is payment, I will directly credit cash, 19,750. And then, since there is an expense that was paid, of course, utilities that you are paying for, they are not considered as assets because the benefit from it, from the water bill, from the electricity bill, again, you have already consumed it before. So, you're going to use utilities expense. And if you remember, utilities expense has a debit normal balance, utilities expense. Which is why this is, we can conclude that this is a correct entry, utilities expense. Now, sometimes, if you are not really, uh, you do not really understand the debit and credit, you will see utilities expense, credit, uh, it's seldom that there is an entry like that because expenses are usually debit. Unless you are correcting some kind of an error that you have committed in the past, utilities expense are usually debit. Okay? So, 
unlike the asset that it could be debit, it could be credit, utilities expenses not like that, or expenses in general is not like that. Usually expenses are debited. Okay? Now, let's go to letter G. On the letter G, oh no, what am I? E, F, no, 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 I did not put any F. So, let's stick to the original problem, that's G. So, there is no F. So, let's go to letter H. Letter H. Three clients paid professional fees for five months in advance at 12,120x to 80,000. So, meaning you have received some cash. So, meaning debit cash, 80,000. And as you remembered, again, this cash, you have not earned it yet. Right? So, you have an earned revenue or what do we call as deferred revenue. Okay? And I've said the deferred revenue or the unearned revenue is not a revenue account. It's a liability wherein you have to pay your clients by way of your professional services. Okay? So, liability. So, what is the normal balance of the liability? That's credit, right? So, meaning, since we're going to increase the unearned revenue, we have to credit unearned revenue, 80000 That's it for letter H. Let's go to letter I. Other clients paid 40000 for the services already rendered. So that would mean you have received another cash, 40000 However, it's not like the letter H because you actually earned this already, the 40000 Okay, so what are you going to do? Of course, you record it as revenue. So what is the normal balance of revenue since we're going to increase the revenue? So instead of saying increase, you say credit, right? So you're going to put here service revenue. 40 that's how you record. Of course, I skipped with the simple explanation and the dates. Okay? And let's have letter J. On letter J, what happened? The owner withdrew 25,000 per personal uses. So in our part, because our footstep here is of the entity as the accountants or the bookkeepers, then for us, we have an outflow of how much? 25,000. We have given that to the owner. Of course, we know the debit, of course. Because that is a withdrawal, so that means we could put here baby G withdrawal. Again, that is assuming that baby G withdrawal is in the list of the chart of accounts. Because basically, you cannot do this recording without an established chart of accounts. Okay? So, if I'm going to give a test to my students, of course, if there are transactions, I'm also, I'm also going to give them chart of accounts so that they can make these entries. But as of this lesson, again, we are assuming that these particular accounts that we use, this in the chart of accounts, imaginary chart of accounts. Okay? So, that's letter J. And... I want you to make entries for 1, 2, 3, and then 4, and then 5, and then 6. I would want that, but let me have that already here. But I'm not going to upload that immediately. Okay? So I'm gonna cut this video here. Okay?